welcome to Bad Music Taste and Other Ways to Ruin Your Life. My name is Dominic. And my name is Sam. Dominic has a record this week. This week's record is Field Day by Dag Nasty. This is an original copy on green vinyl. Anyways, today we're talking to Brian Stewart of Ruin My Design, Avail, and a lot more. How's it going, Brian? It's going great. It's going great. I was just saying, it's a beautiful day. It's a little snowy out and I uh, had some coffee, you know, very cool. Um Actually, I, I'm excited for the the Field Day reissue. That's a really uh, that's a neat record. I remember buying the uh, uh, All Ages Show seven inch at Smash back in the day when the single came out first. Very very cool. So, yeah, Doug Doug from Field Day was saying that they're going to reissue that uh, possibly at some point in the near future. So, excited. Yeah, I figured that one would be appropriate for uh, this interview, and I was I was looking on the back. And they have like pictures of everybody, and I couldn't believe that 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 was Doug. I know he kind of looks the same, to be honest. It's kind of wild. Yeah, but then like, and then there's Peter there too. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> that's so cool. Yeah, those those are some fun shows that we did with those guys recently. That was cool. Yeah, um, but you have a new book out called Aim to Reach. So, what made you want to write a book? You know what's cool is I was just thinking about that earlier today and the book will have been put out one year ago uh next month uh, i think it was march 28th uh, it, I, it came out you know it's one of those things like because i've been in a bunch of different bands and i've been around for a little while and i've had some some experiences i wanted to i had been telling some of these funny stories about my my ridiculous trip to California, you know, that I went on when I was 18 and, uh, <laughs> you know, trying to be a, a roadie for Dr. No, although they never knew it. And I'd been telling these funny stories for a long time. And I was starting to think about like the roots of like what, my, what got me into punk and those, all those beautiful aha moments. And I just thought, you know, I should, I should put this out. You know, this gal I was dating a long time ago, she goes, you know, you have all this poetry and some funny stories. You should consider putting a book together. And I told the guy at uh, Kurt Foster at Settle For It Records, and he was like, let's just do it. Let's not talk about it. Let's just do it. And he just, he was like, I'll put that out. And he, and he did. And he just did, did what he said he was going to do. And, uh, you know, and I just started adding little stories and little aha moments. And then I saw this book by Paul Weller that my daughter gave me. And it was his poetry along at the bottom. And it had these little insights, like little insights of, this, of each po poem and what where it came from. And, you know, and I had seen that earlier with this band Grip years ago. And I, and I remember thinking the insights were more interesting to read than the poems. And I wanted to celebrate that idea. And so I just... I just did the same thing and it, it, I'm glad I did it. It was really relieving and exciting. So how long did it take to write the book? <laughs> well, it spans from 86 to 2021, 20, <laughs> but you know, in, in truth, some of those stories I had been telling for years, but you know, honestly, when I, when I just sat down and started, you know, I, I broke my leg during a room by design show one show i uh, jumped off something and for the third time and the third time was not a charm and uh we, you know we i broke my leg and we finished the set i think we had like two three more songs but i very much knew i had i had a problem and so after i got out of the out of the emergency room and i had like a week or two off laying around um i i was like you know what i should just start this this outlining it now so i i literally got a box of all the stuff I had written over the years. And I just, I went through, it was over a hundred lyrics and some poems and stuff. And I just went through every single one from Avail all the way up to Ruin by Design and all the stuff in between. And anything that I picked up that I thought had a story, I jotted down a, a real quick story real quick and then moved to the next page. I didn't spend a lot of time on it. And some stuff I just passed right over because I didn't feel it had a story. But anything that had a story, real quick, I wrote the story down. And I that was the first step. That was the first process to outlining what would it be, you know. And then I wanted it to be kind of in chronological order. It, it, honestly, it, it kind of wrote itself. Once I got started, it just kind of went, you know. And then 
few summers later, we have this wonderful, the world's on fire pandemic. And I was quarantined uh, for uh, several times during that because of the job that I do. Um, and so I had a lot of uh, time to be with myself. And so I, I started writing some of these stories and, uh, you know, and that's when I told Kurt about what I was doing. And he was like, yeah, when you're, when you're think you're ready, let's put it together. And, and, and that's what happened. So I just think it's kind of neat. You know, some of the people that I uh, admire, Keith Morris, you know, uh, put out a book. Um, Rollins was one of the first folks in the punk scene that put out a book, you know, Black Coffee Blues, you know, and I was like, ooh, you know, how cool, you know. And then that book he did on uh, Get in the Van, man, I just thought, whoa, that's like, the, that's got to be the, one of the coolest punk books ever, right? So I was inspired by all of these ideas and I, you know, not that mine's like that, but it's inspiration comes in all flavors and sizes. Right. So, so that's, yeah. Yeah. I was actually just wondering kind of to go back a little bit, you were talking about since it covers like a few decades of, you know, history, had this been like a long-term project where it just felt like the pieces of the puzzle kind of fell into place or did you kind of have to take a trip back through all of those stories and kind of put it together? You know, what's kind of cool is I've been saving everything I wrote. So when I went through that stuff that day, there were all the stuff that I wrote. There was all the stuff that I wrote for the first band and stuff like that. And, um, but yeah, I mean, it's fun to reminisce. I mean, the neat thing about all of this is I've been going forward the whole time doing new music and new, new bands and, you know, I have a pretty good memory. And so it wasn't, like a big journey going backwards as much as it was just sort of uh, a celebration of all that's happened, you know, um, you know, not only in music, but in my personal life. I mean, I have been very privileged to be a part of lots of different music, but also jobs and work experiences in life and having kids and all kinds of neat stuff. You know, I, I before we go any further though, I gotta say, I love this podcast i think it's fantastic i love the service and the and the love that you're bringing to the punk scene and i just before i even forget and ramble on about myself too much i want to give you both mad mad props when i met you at the auto bar you both were so rad and awesome and um i'm and i'm so moved you know i, I just the punk scene right now is so awesome and i'm so glad to share this with you both and I love what you're doing and um you know and I'm I was like watching the Porcel I mean we could just talk about the Porcel I could just talk about Porcel <laughs> this whole interview of, and I wouldn't mind at all I have like Wait, which one? very lovely beautiful memories of that man in my life throughout my <laughs> life and he doesn't even know who I am or anything and I've got these significant moments in time I mean what a what a wonderful spirit he is, you know, this, this dude who's been in all these great bands. And I've, when I was in Lickety Split, we opened for shelter in the pie tasters at the nine 30 club. When I was, here's a fun one. When I was in Avail, we had, we were in New York city. We had, we were like all in our late teens. We're going there to play a show at CBGB's like on a Wednesday night. Like, you know, we get out of the van and <laughs> on his bicycle, on like a beach cruiser, no shirt, guitar, backpack with his SG, or no, his uh, Les Paul on his backpack, poor cells just riding down the street, probably on his way to like Youth of Today band practice. And I just thought, we, we've been in New York for like maybe five minutes. Like we're all these rest in kids, sheltered rest in kids. And we're in New York City for the first time, all of us. And we get out of the van and there goes poor cell on his bicycle. And I'm just like, I mean, it doesn't really get any cooler than that. You know, I, I remember seeing Youth of Today when, at the old 930 Club. We all went down there to see the adolescents on Bradson Battalions and Youth of Today were opening on and they were touring on their seven inch. And like none of us had ever heard of them. We didn't know anything about them. And when they hit the stage, they were they blew our minds. I think I think Ray jumped off the stage. No one caught him. I think he I mean, that's about a five foot four foot drop i think he bounced off the floor and back onto the stage I, it was a long time ago i my memory is blurred <laughs> but I, I think that's what happened and uh and they had gotten all of their gear stolen the night before so they were using 
you know, all of this weird gear and like the bass player had one of those like little skinny basses like the guys in Jibo would use or something cool. I, and they were just, they came out and blew us away. So <laughs> I, and I, you mentioned and I, mean, I love shelter and ugh, you know, so cool. Well, thank anyway, you so sorry. much. No, yeah, thank you person. so much. And oh my God, Porcel is one of the nicest people we've ever talked to. Yeah. Yeah. Um, like he, he designed our uh, our logo. Hold on. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> like he designed our logo on this. Oh, I didn't know that. I yeah, know and that. it was like, I... like we reached out to him, I think, and he would like, we were like, okay, how much is it gonna be? And he said, just watch this documentary. Like that's enough. <laughs> and we were like, holy wow. shit, you know? Okay, that's so cool. <laughs> See what I mean? Like he's, ah, like when yeah, every time I've met him and uh. Oh, oh, one more, one more, and I'll, then I'll I'll stop. Okay, so, <laughs> probably not, but I'm just saying that to be nice. So our my daughter, our daughter and I go to see Judge and Youth of Today a few seasons ago in Richmond at some warehouse district, like really spooky and cool. And it was going to be Judge and Youth of Today and some other bands. And I have I never got to see Judge back in the Safari Club days. The one chance I had, I think Avail had a show that same night, like out of town. So I didn't get to go. So I never got to see Judge. So I never know. I've never known what Mike Judge looked like, you know, and I'm like, oh, I can't wait to see the judge. It's going to be so great. I've seen Youth of Today, Shelter many times. Um, and then right before Judge is supposed to come on and I still don't know what is this. Could this be Mike Judge? Could this be Mike Judge? I don't know. And then they're about to come on and Porcel comes up to the mic and he goes, Hey, so we got some bad news. Mike judge couldn't make the show tonight. You know, his wife needed him for something. So I'm going to sing for judge tonight. And I'll tell you what that Porcel rocked that mic. Like I've never, like he was, I mean, great guitar player. Absolutely. But he fronted judge. Like I've never seen a front guy front a band before. He was like in the Iggy pop category of amazing this like he's like in the crowd on the crowd he knew all the words oh my god and the i guess the uh their guitar tech must have was the guitar player because it you know porcel just fronted the band it was just like over the top so i still never saw judge with mike judge but hey what are you gonna do <laughs> yeah i mean he sang for like like the project x thing a while ago yeah. Oh wow, yeah, that's right. I guess I didn't realize that was him singing, huh? Yeah. <laughs> but like we've done like two interviews with with Porcel and he's just yeah. so nice. Yeah. Well, he's a fellow, he's also a fellow yogi, so we there we go and I loved what he, you know, the the tofurkey. I, I'm a, been a vegetarian since I was 18, <laughs> so it's uh it's a good life, you know, it's it's certainly not a uh Re restriction of any kind i feel that it's a it's a good it's a good way to be you know I'm, I'm 52 and i've been doing it since i was 18 so most of my life i've been a vegetarian and it's a pretty good little life i like it a lot you know yeah so i feel like so both cool. times we've talked to ourselves like you walk away with new thoughts like yeah. he's just so yeah. wise to talk to mm -hmm. oh, yeah. after our first interview like after we were done he texts me and he goes Hey, I know some people that what that might want to do like an interview. Is it okay if like I throw your phone number around? I was like, okay. He didn't say who. Right. That afternoon or like that night, I'm standing in my living room and I get a random text and it says, Hey, this is Moby. Porcel gave me your number. <laughs> I'm like, wow. Moby. Like, that's <laughs> wow. I was thinking like another, like, you know, like maybe right. somebody else from Youth of Today. I was not expecting to get a text wow, from Moby. Moby. Wow, yeah. <laughs> Did he sing like Southside to you? That's when I, I love that song. Like, that, that record <laughs> play is so cool. Neato. Yeah, um, but Ruined by Design recently broke up, if you don't mind talking about it. Yeah, it's we, a we bummer, can... you know. Um, oh, you know, bands are, bands are, uh, bands are weird. Bands are weird people, and it's you know, when you're in a band, I mean, think about it like when a band does anything, you have to have all three or four or five or if, or if it's Iron Maiden, all six members, right, have to like, because they have three guitar players, count them, three, um, 
all all the people in the band have to make it the decision to make the same move show up at the same time you know and it's like hurting very special cats you know and bands break up i don't know i've it's I, I mean, you know, I hope it's all good. I hope uh, we have a record coming out. We, we put out, I think, the, the coolest record that I've ever been on. The Code Yellow release that we did is the coolest thing I've ever recorded, um, hands down. And not just because it's the new thing, but, you know, it, it came out on cassettes, which is um, talk about time machines. Right. And the B-side <laughs> has the whole live album. Right. Which is only on the cassette. And then there'll be a seven inch uh, down the road we were talking. And then eventually we're going to put all 10 tracks that we recorded in that session out on a CD. And my hope is to put the live album as a bonus track. So there's still stuff to do. Um, you know, it really boils down to communication, you know, and if they're, if, if folks aren't communicating, what's, where do you go? You know, what are you going to, yeah. what do you do? And so right now, you know, I got a new project going and I'm excited about that. We haven't plugged in yet. We haven't started playing. So I'm kind of keeping it, you know, on the, on the DL a little bit, but it's exciting. It's, we're going to go sort of old school skate rock, but yeah, room by design. I mean, we, we were a band for six years and we put out a release every year we were a band and, you know, my record track is about three years and then I'm something happens and the band ends. So this is like <laughs> A twice as long as anything I've ever done. So I say a full blown success, you know, truly. I mean, you know, I, I talk to Rooney all the time, uh, and just just today actually, and uh, you know, and we'll see what happens. You know, hopefully when the seven inch comes out or whatever, we we can do a show or who knows. I don't know. Yeah. You know. Yeah. I mean, if the, oh, I'm if the police can get back together with Sting, I think like. <laughs> we're going to be okay. You know, David Lee Roth got back together with Eddie Van Halen at one point. I, I think this is a little below that, you know, I think we're going to be okay. <laughs> you, uh, you mentioned cassettes with like some people might argue was like an outdated form of, of music. So why did you guys choose to put it on cassettes? Because it's an outdated form of music. <laughs> <laughs> um, I love cassettes, you know, and, and, you know, and truth be told, they're just fun, you know, and we can, we could, we got them done. We printed like a hundred copies and you can do cool stuff. Like the A side is the whole album, but it has one bonus track that's only on the cassette. Right. <laughs> and then the B side is a whole live album that's only on the cassette. Right. But then you can put like a little sticker, which we did and a download code, which we did. And the download code has one track that's only on the download. You know, it's all art, you know, um, all formats are art um, and they're fun. You know, it's just fun and um, they weren't expensive to do. And then it's like, you know, then we can say, well, we have our, our code yellow records on cassette, which is, you know, ridiculous um, in a way. And then CD, which I guess is also an outdated format. Right. And then vinyl, which, at one point was an outdated format, but now is hip and cool. So who knows? I don't know. I'm saying let's do eight tracks. I think my next band's going to do eight tracks only. You know, I don't know if you know what eight tracks are. Yeah, I, I've seen like a lot of CDs come back recently. I've even yeah. seen like more cassettes get pressed recently. I know somebody who uh, who has a label and they do mainly cassettes. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's, it's a novelty in a way, um, but it's also, it's, it's a viable format. You know, and the other thing is it's a physical copy, you know, with art and lyrics. And it's something like when I go see a band, if I'm moved by the band um, and, and I want to support that band, I support them with my dollar, just like every other punk rock or every other person on the planet, if you, you vote with your dollar. So when you go see a band and, and they don't, maybe they don't have t-shirts, maybe they don't have, you know, whatever. And you want to buy something. And I love buying new music. I love it when bands put out new music. I mean, I love it when new, you know, old folks, you know, get new bands going and put out new music. I mean, 
let's talk about off for a second. I mean, like, wow. Right. You know, or the new TSOL album that, you know, trigger complex that came out a few summers ago, you know, it's completely possible. You know, the, the new, uh, stiff little fingers record that came out a few summers ago i mean really good neat stuff so i love i love i think it's cool to have product you know all that fun stuff so that's yeah i think that's why i did this i think the point of like it just being fun is true too because yeah. i know my mom still has a huge cassette collection and like there's nowhere that she listens to them really but she's like i just like having them because it's like like you said like it's a physical thing you can hold on to yeah. and it's just fun <laughs> well, and a lot of I have a several cassettes. I have a little double cassette carrier. It's pretty cool. A lot of that stuff is is got memories tied to it. I mean, like right. you know, I have my Judge and Gor- Gor- Gorilla Biscuits cassettes still that I bought in the eighties. I have them on CD also, but I don't know. There's just something. Ah, it's just cool. I, I don't know what it is, and I can still play them, and they still work. You know what's funny is I have a CD player like a box thing that plays cassettes so it's you know i'm not just living in the past i'm living in the past currently right now and um i bought it on amazon for like 80 bucks like a week ago so i have a brand new you know cassette player in my room right now next to my little tiny record player that rooney gave me that is one of those junky little record players but i love it (laughs) yeah so uh i don't know i just i if you can't have fun with this, then what can you have fun with? I mean, it's music, right? It's what it's what we all do. It's what we all love, and it's what gets us through the day sometimes. Honestly, you know. So, so backtracking a little bit, we I know we kind of already mentioned Avail a little, but when the band first started, you were the singer. So, what was that like? You know, it was it was one of the most exciting times ever because you know you're 18. I, I was 18. And we were trying to, we were going into DC, you know, and you're going to positive four shows and, you know, you go see Fugazi at DC space. And you're, and, you know, I remember going to see Fugazi and the show was 99 cents and Ian had a bowl of pennies and you would give him a dollar and he would give you a penny and a lyric sheet. And you'd see Fugazi. And this is when they were a three piece. Uh, Guy wasn't really part of the band. He'd get up, get up and do backup vocals. So you'd see this, this thing happening right in front of you and, and you'd be like, I want, I want to do that, you know? And I had <laughs> been wanting to do a band since 86 and in Reston, there was this real punk scene that blossomed out of complete boredom. You know, I, people just got tired of whatever playing video games. And we you know we all rode skateboards and we all built skate ramps and, and whatever. And, um, I had been trying to get a band together for a long time. And I, I don't know, I just was writing lyrics and, and Joe Banks uh, from, he was in this, the most amazing band called Slee Stacks, which is a local rest in band. And, and he asked me if I'd be a part of this thing that he was trying to do. And I said, yeah. And so it, it kind of accidentally started, but it was just an exciting time because we were all being so creative. We, there wasn't any, rules and nobody knew what they were doing and you know we we would set up early on we were like we would book a show like in west virginia and we would drive to west virginia and play and then drive back and then book a show in philadelphia and drive to philadelphia and drive back and book a show in new york and drive to new york and drive back we didn't know that you could go like from new york to philadelphia you know (laughs) to the next city like we didn't know anything about we didn't know we didn't think like that you know um you know and also everyone was doing cassettes back then. So the ruined by design cassettes are a little tip tip to the old school as you know, those memories, you know, so, um, but it was an exciting time. You know, we were making t-shirts with stencils and, and stick stickers with stencils and spray paint. You just sit there for hours, like doing this stuff. And, and we didn't know you could like go get those printed, you know, <laughs> we didn't know anything. Like we didn't have any money either. You know, we just, I mean, I always worked and had, money for my life and rent and things. Cause I was living on my own at, even at that time. But uh, you know, I don't know. It was, it was just an exciting time. It's, it's, it, it feels like that now with this new thing, like everything's gra- everything's all grassroots and, and ground level. And I'm writing all these new lyrics and we're getting you know song ideas and, 
you know, it's cool. And the scene now is neat. Like everyone's, it's almost back to like house shows, you know, the Chuggalug house in Richmond and the crawl space in Fredericksburg. Um, you know, that's what it was back then. You know, somebody would have a, sh- their parents would be out of town for the weekend and we'd like have a punk show in the house and the house would get trashed, you know, and then we'd, <laughs> But we'd, the guys in Avail, or myself and some other friends, but we'd stay after the show and try to like put the house back together so the kid wouldn't get in trouble, you know, kind of thing, you know. Um, it was just, it was just innocent and fun. And, and, um, and I think that's what inspired the band, you know. And then we were, we were, I was so completely blown away by seven seconds and, and what they were talking about, you know, and it was in the time of, you know, punk rock, let's smash a bottle and, and, f shit up or can we say can we cuss on here yeah <laughs> oh good okay okay sorry yeah they you know and, and i was doing i was reading an interview with kevin seconds and it was like you know we're so sick of this fuck shit up stuff he goes how about let's fix shit up and i was like yes that is <laughs> brilliant you know plus you know to be honest like how punk rock is it to go against the punk rock mentality right like, <laughs> like you know everyone's wearing black so i remember wearing all white like i don't even realize i was doing that you know? so, so stuff like that you know but i was so moved by their message and then that's where the the name of Vale kind of came from i was just kind of looking for a positive word and i started in the dictionary in the a's and i can't think of a more positive word than that and i just stumbled across it in the dictionary you know so well, Brian, thank you so much for your time. This was a lot of fun. Thank you so much. Absolutely. Great talking to you both. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. <laughs>